And uh, I'll stay in verse number 13, but these, kind of, these two verses seem to kind of go together. Uh, Paul says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. He says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I'm going to read verse 13 again just for the sake of it. And maybe it'll sink into our hearts this morning as we try to dissect it. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and then he says, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I want to preach to you this morning on this thought. Sometimes you got to force yourself. Yes, sir. I think if there's one phrase or one thought that rings out at me as I read that verse of Scripture and God wouldn't let me get away from it, that is what rang so loudly in my ears is that sometimes you just got to force yourself. Amen. It's not easy to have to force yourself, but sometimes you do. I find a lot of times in life I have to force myself to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> my, uh, the older I get, the more I am finding out, the less I say, the better off I am. Because if I talk long enough, I'm going to say something goofy and stupid and get myself in trouble. Yes. Amen. And sometimes I have to, you just got to force yourself, even during Christmas and you are around all of your family members that you love, and then there's those that you love but you don't like. Y'all got them too? Amen. And so you get around them for a while and you force yourself to smile and Endure them for the little short time that you do. I mean, I love my sisters, but I don't like being around them all the time. I visit Daddy's on Christmas morning, having a good time cutting up. And we was eating a breakfast Daddy had fit for a king. I mean, we do it all, even have grits. Now, are there any northerners in here? Back there's Miss India. Wasn't it a good day when you ate a bowl of grits? And country ham, amen. That's all what? Daddy had the whole outfit. And me and my sisters, we can stand each other for about two hours after that. I've had my limit. i got to leave. I was in there and Tammy made this profound statement that undoubtedly had to come from Venus. That's where they say women come from anyhow. <laughs> Men come from Mars, so there we go. We're from two different planets. And Tammy said, you know, we need to go on about a week-long vacation together as a family. <laughs> I looked at her and I said, you're crazy. I forced myself to go to Daddy's Christmas morning and smile for about two hours and be around. Sometimes you got to force yourself to appear happy even though... On the inside, you're sad. I find out those that usually are the most miserable in life are those that never do force themselves. <laughs> Paul is making a statement here. He's saying, I'm going to force myself to control my thinking Change my way of looking at things. You know, it would do all of us some good if we would force ourselves to change our way of thinking. Right. Amen. I mean, he said, I'm going to forget some things and I'm going to look to some things. He said, I'm going to get control of my mind. That's, good. That's a pretty good place to start. Right. Yeah. yeah. If we could change the way we're thinking, I think we wouldn't be in as big a mess sometimes as we are. A lot of times it starts right here between this right here. Whatever it is, if it's mush, intelligence, I don't know. But there's something 
up here that causes us to react. And a lot of times we need to change our way of thinking. And if you're ever going to change your way of thinking, you're going to have to force yourself to do it. You're right. It don't just happen. And Paul's saying, I'm going to forget some things which are behind. And I'm going to reach forth to some things that are before. Let me tell you one reason why some people never get to what's in front of them. is because they can't never get past what's behind. You're right. <laughs> and some people never go forward because they're always looking backwards. Jesus even told us about looking backwards. He said if any man put his hands to the plow and look back, he's not fit for the kingdom of heaven. So there's problems that come when you keep looking back. Yeah. Even with Lot's wife, who her name is not even given, they was told to get out of Sodom and Gomorrah and never look back, yet she just couldn't seem to forget about it. Right. And looked over her shoulder, and then all of a sudden, poof, she turned into a pillar of salt. Right. All throughout the Bible, you see where God's people were continually looking back. You can't change the past. You cannot change the past and what has already happened. You've got to force yourself sometimes in life. And it's not always easy. Let me give you four things in this verse of Scripture. I want you to notice, first of all, Paul's humble acknowledgement. Notice with me in verse number 13. He says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. Right. You want me to tell you what Paul is saying? Paul is saying, I know I'm not where I could be. I know I'm not where I need to be. He was humbly acknowledging the fact that he needed to force some things in his life. You know what, I think the beginning stage of going further and getting away from your past is admitting it humbly that you realize that you have not arrived. You're right. Amen. Yes, sir. None of us have. Right. Here's a humble acknowledgement. Sometimes you got to force yourself, watch this, not to be pride-filled. Look at verse number 13. It says, brethren... I count not myself. If there's anybody we usually want to count. <laughs> You're right. Amen. It's us. Yeah. If there's anybody we're usually going to leave out, it ain't going to be number one I. Usually it's going to be I am going to be the one I'm going to put in. But Paul made a humble acknowledgement and he said, listen, I've got to force myself to keep me out of this. I think a lot of times the reason we get ourselves in a bigger mess is because we don't try to take ourselves out of something we want to put ourselves into. And we make our situation more about us. Instead of him, he said, I can't knock myself. Just forget about me. It's a humble acknowledgement. And by the way, sometimes you've got to force yourself to take you out of the equation. Right. Right. Let me say that again. Sometimes you've got to force yourself to take you out of the equation. Amen. It's a hard thing to do. But it's a forceful thing. Watch this. Sometimes you've got to force yourself not to be pride-filled. But watch this in verse 13. In his humble acknowledgement, sometimes you've got to force yourself not to be pressuring folk, which is people. Look at verse number 13. He said, I count not myself. In other words, he says in verse 13, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. He's not talking about anybody else but him. He's not pointing fingers at other people and saying, hey, you need to force yourself. He's not trying to pressure somebody else. He's pointing a finger at himself. And he said, I'm the one that needs to work on some things in my life. By the way, let me go ahead and put it like this. He, Paul is the preacher, am I right? Paul is the one up there saying, hey, look, I want all of y'all to read what I'm trying to tell you. Paul is saying, brother, I count not myself to have apprehended. Here's a preacher saying, I know I'm not where I need to be, and I know there's some things in my life that I need to work on, and I'm not trying to be, I'm trying 
trying to keep myself out of it and I'm not trying to pressure nobody. And usually that's what people like to hear when the preacher is talking about himself. Can I say this? In all honesty, as a preacher, sometimes I have to force myself not to pressure people. Yeah. Yes. 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 Paul is making it a point right here. He said, if there's anybody that needs to be pressured, he said it was himself. As a preacher, as a man of God, he said, I've got to force myself. That's good. Sometimes it's hard not to want to pressure people. Yeah. And by the way, that's what goes on in a lot of circles today. You're there's right. pressure coming from pulpits to manipulate yeah. people and pressure yeah. them yeah. Yeah. into yeah. doing things that the preacher wants them to do. But if the fact would be made known and be made clear that the preacher needs to start with the change. Yeah, right. And Paul knew he was the one that needed to force himself. You can't force other people. Amen. And you can't change other people. Amen. Me, this will go for everybody in here. If there's somebody aggravating you in your life, how about instead of them changing, why don't you change? That's good, brother. Amen. Huh? You ain't going to change them no how. By the way, you can't. Some of y'all thinking, bless God, I'll get me a ball bag and I'll change. <laughs> yeah. This old hickory cane right here. Some of y'all thinking it's a good thing I ain't got me one of these. <laughs> Paul had done come to the conclusion that he knew he couldn't change his soul. Amen. He had said, look, if there's anybody I need to force, it's me. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Usually we're looking at everybody else's life saying that, hey, they need to forget about some things and they need to move on in their life. Amen. Huh? You see anybody you say, yeah, boy, they need to move on. They've got some ground to cover. They ain't where they need to be. And usually we'll try to press them in the direction that they need to go or the way we think they need to go. Good, brother. You're right. Amen. Something I've learned about being a pastor, too. Being a pastor, I've got a lot more to learn, but some things I've learned about being a pastor, you can't pressure nobody to do nothing. And God didn't call pastors to be pressure people, You're to right. push people. God called pastors to be leaders and lead people. You don't push people, you lead people. And Paul saw right here that sometimes he had to force himself not to be pressuring people and making them change in a way that he thinks they ought to. So Paul uses himself as an example and says, hey, look, I'm working on some things in my life. In my mind, I'm trying to get some things changed around. Me too. So just at the same time that you are working on your life, guess what? The preacher is working on his life too. Yeah, that's good. Huh? Well, that's good. That's good. Uh, amen. But see, that, that's not what usually draws a crowd. What usually draws a crowd to some is some big arrogant, big-headed Superman kind of Hitler preacher that brow beats everybody yeah. and walks on water and right. clouds in front of everybody, but really on the inside, he's no different than anybody else. You're right. And Paul is a living example trying to prove to the church of Philippi that he's got mind trouble just like them. You're right. And sometimes you've got to force yourself to admit humbly that you've got a problem. Right. Amen. Yes, sir. And that's exactly what Paul was doing to the church of Philippi. Yep. He was admitting publicly on a piece of paper to a whole congregation of people that he had issues. Mental issues. Children. Yes, sir. Anybody else in here got any mental issues? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are lying. Y'all are lying. <laughs> I've said this before, I'll say it again. They say 20% of the population has mental problems. They say only 5 out of those 20 have been diagnosed. And only 3 out of those 20 are receiving treatment. That means, you know what? You're sitting beside a bunch of crazy people that don't really know. <laughs> Amen. Amen. 
You say, well, I ain't crazy. Well, don't take your medicine. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, some of y'all do without food, without your mental stuff. Amen. Yeah. Paul's admitted publicly he's having some problems mentally. He said, I'm having trouble getting over this, all this stuff, and I'm trying my best. I'm forcing myself. That's what he's saying. He humbly acknowledges the fact, and sometimes you got to force yourself. To not be pride filled, to not be pressuring folk, or to not be pointing fingers. He said, I myself. He wasn't pointing a finger at nobody else. But it's his self that he knew needed the most work on. Number two, notice not only his humble acknowledgement, notice his hard announcement. Look at verse number 13 again. Brother, I count not myself to have apprehended. That's his humble acknowledgement. But this one thing I do, here it comes. Forgetting those things which are behind. Yeah. That is a hard thing to do. You're right. You're right. Forcing yourself to forget about things that has happened in your past, whether it be good or bad, is a hard thing to do. Right. Some people have trouble forgetting about their sin in their past. It's ever before you. Those things you've done when you was, maybe before you got saved or even when you was saved, things you know wasn't right. Maybe you cheated somebody out of a dollar. Maybe you said something bad. Maybe you had a bad attitude towards somebody and some words come out that you should have spit on the grass and burnt the grass instead of saying the words. Is anybody else here with me this morning? Right. Amen. Amen. And he's seeing whatever it is. Maybe it's something in your heart. Maybe it's bitterness or maybe you're mad at somebody and you're holding that grudge. And you just won't let it go because you're nursing that thing like a baby. And that thing's just boiling on the inside. And yet Paul's saying he's going to forget about it. It's hard to forget about sometimes the sin right. that you've yeah. committed in your life. Right. What about that stuff you done last week? Anybody in here committed any sin last week? We got two or three honest folks. The rest of them is lying still. Right. Uh, Every one of us has. That's right. We, 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 the sin that we commit is a, is a regular basis. It's a regular thing. And Paul said, I'm going to forget about those sins. How can we forget about the sin we committed? I mean, God's forgot about it, has He not? Yes. Y'all said amen over here? Let's come over here this side. David Lamb, you're on that side today, so I'm not pointing fingers at you, all right? And Daddy, I'm not pointing them at you. I'm just over here on this side because y'all a whole lot quieter than that side, even though they ain't very vocal either. <laughs> about sin in my life. You see, our mind is not like a, a, a computer to where you can delete it or put something on your hard drive and wipe it clean and it's gone forever. Things stay on our mind forever. Amen. You've got to force yourself to forget about sin in your past. You say, preacher, how can I do it? The only way I can come to a conclusion, Daddy, that helps me forget about what I've done wrong and the sin in my life is I've got to see myself under the blood of Jesus. Yeah, and God has yeah. given me of all of my sin. Yeah, and it is then and only then that I can force myself to forget about things I've done. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Because if you don't, you'll always be living a life of condemnation. Yes, Amen. Everywhere you go, you'll be condemned. Yes, and that's exactly what the devil wants. He wants you to remember every bad thing you've ever done, every bad word you've ever said, every bad deed you've ever done. He wants to throw that up in your face and keep you defeated and under condemnation. What we need to do, and I wasn't planning on preaching a New Year's Eve message at all, or a New Year's message, but we ought to make up our mind this year in 2015. We're going to do the best we can yeah. to shame the devil and tell him our sin is yeah. under the blood. Your past. Right. Yes, 
Three would say, but I was a pretty wicked man. Well, he died for that too. Yes, you right. say, well, I was a mean person. Well, he died for you too. Yep. Amen. Amen, Amen. Amen brother. Sure did. It's hard to get over our sin. That's a hard acknowledgement when Paul said he's going to forget those things which was behind. Here's another thing that's hard to forget. Not only our sin, but our success. <coughs> See, I'll say, wait, 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 wait a minute, preacher. Now, I like remembering the good things that I've done. Well, there's nothing wrong, and I'm not trying to beat you down to where you have nothing that ambition and desire and zeal. No, that's not what I'm trying to do. Some people will look at things they've done good in their life to the point it makes them complacent and causes them to stop trying to do anything oh, else in their life. That's good. My, my. That's good. That's good. And so all they'll do is they'll look at what they used to do and what we did. There's no need in doing no more. We've done enough and we were successful. Well, thank God for the success of people. But God help us to not become complacent yeah, right. just because yeah, God right. gave us victory yeah. and we were successful yesterday and last year. Help us to be successful yeah. in the year to come. Yeah. And not live in our past successes in our life. That's good, preacher. I'll tell you another one. See, here's what happens. When you can't get over your sin, it causes condemnation. When you can't get over your success, it causes complacency. That's what happens to a lot of churches that grow and prosper and the Lord blesses and you build buildings and you, you lose your vision, you become complacent and you get satisfied in where you are. And true. if there's one thing Bethel Baptist Church we don't need to do, we don't need to get complacent in the presence of God and say this is all God has done for us. There's more people to be reached, more souls to be saved, more missionaries to be supported, more people to go out into the world and preach the gospel. First thing I started thinking about when we been over this building back in 05 and we did all the work here, spent nearly half a million dollars. When everything was done and everything was renovated and everything was built on, I caught myself walking around the parking lot on the inside. I was thinking, Lord, what's next? Lord, what's next? I couldn't find what well, Lord, what's next? What's next? What are we going to do next? I was never complacent in my heart. As soon as that family life center got done building out there, you say, preacher, is that as far as we're going? Absolutely not. Yeah, we're not stopping in building. Yeah, we're not stopping in property. It's the soul of man that yeah, we're after. And every yeah, man comes yeah, to this yeah, world. This needs help yeah, here. And God help us not to get complacent where we are. Amen. That's good. That's good, Pastor. That's Some good. of y'all in here. That's good. You've done some things in the past, and your past success is keeping you from doing anything else for God. Uh -oh. That's good, preacher. That's heaven. Yeah. Amen. You say, preacher, I used to do this. Well, why don't you do it now? Uh -oh. huh? That's good. Here's another one. Mm. Hard acknowledgement or announcement. Sin, it's hard to forget our past sin. And if you don't, that leads to condemnation. It's hard to forget our successes, but if you don't, that's going to lead to complacency. Here's another one. It's hard to forget our past sorrows. Uh -huh. yep. Hurts. Heartaches. Yes. yes, sir. Whether it comes from tragedy or from people. Yeah. Or from issues. Listen. Some things you caused. Some things you didn't cause, but you went through a hardship. And you're struggling with sorrow and grief in your heart. And you can't seem to get past it. And you can't force yourself. Matter of fact, I'm trying to say this very humbly. But a lot of times it's simply because we don't get past our sin. And we don't get past our our, our success and we don't get past our sorrow because we're looking for self-pity and we won't force ourselves to do no better. Amen. Now that is hard. I, I am admitting that is hard. 
But a lot of times we're looking for pity Amen. and handouts and pats on the back. And that's the reason we won't never get over it. We love telling people about how bad we got it that's and true. the sorrow that we're experiencing. And we want everybody to play the poor pitiful me game. When if you would force yourself, you'd see that living in the past is not where it's at. It's in the future, baby. Yes, right. That's where God's yes. got great things for us. Yes. That's good. Thank you. That's good. Amen. Very good. Yeah, that's and good. that's a hard announcement. Sure. And Paul made a hard one when he said, forgetting those things which are behind. You know what? Some of y'all need to forget some stuff. Hey, some of you girls need to forget some boys. Good Lord have mercy. And they, some of you boys need to forget some girls. Yes. I needed a better amen. Right? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hey, some of y'all got some grudges you need to forget about. It. You need to get right and just go on the line. Now that's good. Men are just eating you up. You need to, you need to get over it. Yeah. That's good. And you're going to have to force yourself to do it. Amen. Preacher, it's hard. You better believe it's hard. Yeah. That's good. Paul said it's starting with me. Amen. Paul wasn't telling the people to do it. He said it's starting with the preacher. That's good. Amen. That's real good. A hard, a hard announcement. A humble acknowledgement. Sure. Let me give you a third one. I see a hopeful achievement. Look at verse 13. Brother, I kept not myself to have apprehended. In other words, I'm not there yet, boys. Yeah. Preacher admitting it. But this one thing I do, he was simplifying his life a little bit, getting things into perspective. And then he says, I need to forget some things that's behind me. I'm working on my mind right now, whether y'all can see it or not. He's saying this, I'm forcing myself to deal with some mental stuff, and I'm reaching forth unto those things which are before. In other words, what was motivating him to forget what was behind him was the hopeful achievement and the glory that he saw waiting in front of him. <laughs> my, my. In other words, that in front of him was a whole lot better than that that was behind him. Oh, and you'll never experience what's ahead of you till you get over what's behind you. That's right. And Paul said, it's time for me to get my mind right and forget about a lot of stuff and go for what's in front of you. I hope this is making sense it to you is. this morning. Yeah. But he saw himself moving forward, and the only way he could move forward was start right here. Yes, sir. Yeah, right. And you're never going to move forward in your life until you get your mind right. right. Amen. And let go of some junk in your past you're right. that you're dragging around with you everywhere you go. Why was he so confident that he was going to be able to reach that goal and things in the back was going to be left for the things in the future? Here's why. Because first of all, he knew it was reachable. He said, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth. He never would reach for it if it wasn't within his reach. <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on. You want me to tell you how close some of y'all that are dead heads and you live in your past? I ain't going to ask you to raise your hand. Some of you here. You know who you are. You want me to tell you how close you are to experiencing something really wonderful in your life. Let me tell you how close you are. You're within arm's reach. Mm. Amen. That's good. Did anybody else get anything out of that? Yeah. You, you, you're as close 
There's an arm reach. You say, preacher, I'm so far away from where I can enjoy what God would have me to enjoy. No, you're not. It's as close as an arm reach. Yep. Amen. 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 Yeah. It's reachable. You say, preacher, I'll never give anything. The future looks dim. It's terrible. If you turn your head around and get your head out of the past and look to the future, they yeah. some things right with If he just forced you say that. Yeah. Good. That's good. That is good. What's this? He knew it was reachable, but he also knew it was ready. Watch. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which are before. That means they're already ready. They're in the future. Wait a moment. <laughs> I feel like I'm preaching to the walls of myself. Go ahead, but that's all right. I'm still enjoying it. it there's some things, listen, there's some things that God has in your future that nobody else is going to be able to enjoy but you. And all you got to do is force yourself to get your mind off of what used to be and look ahead to what God's got for you. Change your mind. Let me tell you, I think this is a real thing. I still want to go, we all have mental problems. Amen. Some of y'all would agree that some have more mental issues than Amen. Amen. <laughs> yes. I think we'll get all amen to that. Amen. Amen. Mental issues are. But the real fact of the matter a lot of times we're wanting our circumstances to change. We want some new things in our life that God has for us. But we continue to do the same thing over and over and over. And that's nothing more than the definition of insanity. Hmm. Yes, it is. The definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over and over and expect different results. Hmm. That's good for you. That's insanity. That's good. And so we want something new in our life, something fresh. I, I need something fresh in my life. And so instead of forcing ourselves, we don't change. Amen. We want the world to change around us, not us right. around the world, instead of forcing ourselves. I remember when I was a kid, Daddy would get me up to go lay brick. Of course, I didn't lay brick. He'd get me up to take me out of the house so I wouldn't be in the house watching TV and cartoons all the time and then turn into a sorry no fit count young. I still turned into a sorry no fit count young, but I didn't stay in the house watching TV all the time. He got me out of a brick pile. And that used to have a way of persuading me to change. One time in particular, I remember him coming out of the bedroom, son, it's time to get up. And I didn't get up. That was it. In our house, it wasn't four, five, six, seven thousand times. Now, I'm telling you, if you don't get up now, we're going to be late. I can see my daddy do it. Good y'all. Jody, please get up. We're going to be late for the job. And it's just, son, please. Herbie, please. If you get up, I'll buy you a new toy. If you get up, I'll take you to the store and get you a new baseball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A couple of cold water hits you in the face. You get up. Covers come back off of you. Belt go to striping your legs. You get up. Amen. Don't take many times of that to cause you to change. Amen. Of course, not some parents don't do that when they're young. It's the kids around the house. Yeah. Amen. And so now we carry that into our Christian life. Instead of we, the people, changing, we expect God to change His rules around us instead yeah. of us change our life. Yeah. 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 Right. So we're raising a bunch of sport rotten youngins, and mom and daddies can't even get along on how to raise them because yeah. one yeah. says strike their legs, and the other says do it with your woo woo woo. <laughs> and so they get saved, they get in church, and they expect God to change the rules right. for them. Amen. Right. Is anybody here? Amen. Amen. Right. You're right, preacher. 
preaching with him. And so that's why we have very little people forcing themselves. You're right. Because mm. they was never made to force themselves at home. Amen. Amen. That's right. And they get saved and say what? Kids decide if they want to go to church or not. If they want to go, they'll go. If they don't, they don't. No matter how old they are, how young they are, or how bad they need a preacher to put his finger on their nose and tell them if they don't get saved, they're going to die and go to hell. A lot of parents would rather make their kids happy so they'll come home and see them instead of worrying about where they're going to spend eternity. Right. So we don't force nothing. And one of the biggest statements of ever is, just don't force the issue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, no. yeah. <laughs> Not true. The bad thing about that is sometimes I'm like a bull in a china closet. And that ain't always good. No. Because you go to forcing yourself too much. But I'm telling you, we are living in a day and age where nobody will force themselves to do nothing. Amen. Even in the church, and the reason being, there's not been not that's not being taught in the family, in the home, You're even right. in the uh, kids. Oh. We don't force nobody to do nothing. Right. And that's why we got a leader up in Washington, D.C. Yes. and nobody Amen. can force him to do the right thing for our country. We got a lot of people sitting around wishing something would get done. Wait, this is a fine message for the last Sunday morning. It's a good one. Good one. Forgetting those things which are behind. And reaching forth to the things which are before. Forcing yourself. And by the way, if you're going to enjoy and achieve that goal that God has and those things, Alpha, you're going to have to get to a point in your life where you do some things you really don't feel like doing. Amen. I believe you're right. Mm. And it ain't always going to be comfortable. And it ain't always going to feel good. And it ain't always. But if you're looking for sympathy, then just stay the way you are and pour pitiful little old you. But if you're tired of things being the way they are, and if you're tired of living in the past, and if you're tired of being the same old, same old, if you can, by the grace of God, force yourself to get over some of these things and forget about it, your life can be better in the next coming year than it was in 2014. Amen. 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 Let's all stand on our feet. Pursue coming to you, brother.